<laughs> Are y'all ready for the word? Amen. Yeah. Amen. We well, get your word out. Get your pencils out. You know, I, I have to take notes when I'm hearing the word of God. And of course, we do have this on our youth YouTube. And actually, we're going to start putting the links on our website, too. So if you don't remember how to get to the YouTube, you just go to the website, LifeGate CHS, how about that, Charleston.org. So we're going to start putting the teachings up there, too. Well, we have been, as Jan prayed, God... All we're about is God empowering us through his blood, <laughs> empowering us by his spirit for us to be empowered and then deployed where? Into our place of influence. I just can't get over the fact, you know how you sprig a yard? You just put, you put one there and you put one over there, you put one over there, and all of a sudden with the water and the sun, it grows and takes over. Guys, as we understand who, amazingly, we are crafted. I think I said Isaiah 44 says I formed you, right? So, guys, you have the hand of God on your life from the beginning. God doesn't do something and pull it back. Hey, Charles. But God puts his hand on you. And we can try to move away, but God says I'm never going to leave you. And his hand is right there. That's how close we are to God. And God so wants us to, to uh, I'm going to share today again, we're going after God dwelling in us and what the power of that means to us, for God to dwell in us. We talked last week about the blood. We're going to hit that a little bit because we need to know continually how deep we're forgiven, how deep we are redeemed. Isaiah 66, I love this verse. Uh, Doug, Doug's going to do the scripture for me today. Isaiah 66. Again, he says, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where then is a house you can build for me? Where is a place that I may rest? That's been God's heart from the beginning. All through the Old Testament, you see the, the physical building that was not God's plan A. His plan A was Genesis 1. I'm going to make man, male and female, after my image and likeness. And he walked with them. So close. But he gave us choice. Because <laughs> he wanted us to choose to love him. But Jesus has redeemed that mistake. He's the second Adam that is life-giving. So look at Acts 7, 2. Acts 7, 48. It says, how the Most High does not dwell in houses made by human hands, as the prophet has said. Guys, in these last days, and you can see the scripture after scripture, it says, in these last days, in these last times, you will know this in the last days. Guys, we are in the last days. <laughs> I don't know how long that's going to take for the unfold, but guys, we, God is telling us, the Holy Spirit is calling us to so allow him to dwell and be in us so we can bring his word, we can bring his light, we can bring his deliverance, we can bring his love. Because his love is the basis of all that we do. Faith works by what? It works by love and the compassion of God. Jesus healed by compassion. So the whole temple word in the Old Testament was the house of God, and we're the house of God. In Hebrews 9, 26 through 28, he put sin away forever. Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now once at the consummation of the ages, he has manifested to what? Put away sin. He has put away sin. I'm telling you, there's going to be a breed of believers that know that. So that we're not, spent, if we're just, don't be so entangled so easily. Is that Hebrews 12, 11? One of those. Don't be so easily entangled. There's a, there's a breed of ecclesia that's rising on the earth. That we know the blood washes us and cleanses us. Ephesians 2, 
We've been brought near to God. Now in Christ, you were at one time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, who you who were formerly far off have been brought near. Guys, we are going to know that nearness in these last days. I don't know where you are, but God's going to up the game. He is coming. He is drawing. He is saying, hello, I am here. I am with you. Ask me. (laughs) I'll give you wisdom. I'll show you what I want to do in this situation. This is free for you, but John 5, 37. That's it. I love this whole passage. 37 to about 41. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. And he's telling them what they could have. He says, number one, you do not know my voice. You've never heard his voice. So our our part is we hear his voice. That's right. Second thing he says, you've never known his form. They didn't feel and sense the presence of God. We sense and know the presence of God. And that's such a valuable thing, especially out there in our Metron, when the Holy Spirit comes close and starts showing us what he wants to do. (laughs) So they never knew his form. There's a verse in uh, Numbers 12 that highlights that is Moses. You remember what happened with Miriam and uh, Aaron? They they boo-booed and they fussed about Moses. <laughs> Are you the only one that's leading? So God called him out on the carpet. He said, you don't know my, my son, Moses. He knows my form. <laughs> he sees me face to face. So guys, God is letting us know how close he wants to come to us. And he's so with us. 2 Corinthians 5.21, I, I want to put this scripture up. I said it last week, but I wanted you to see it. He who knew no sin became sin on our behalf. So we might become the righteousness of God in him. You know, we've all know that verse, but God is telling me that we're going to know we're right deeper and deeper. We're going to bring down the accusations of the enemy. We're going to understand His accusations versus the voice of God. And that's what the breed is rising up. We're going to be able to shut down the voice of the enemy. Like two weeks ago, we talked about the praise of God. What does it do? It shuts the voice of the enemy. And the other thing is praying in the spirit. I tell you, when, when when Satan starts coming at me, I just pray in the spirit. He doesn't like it. He doesn't understand it, but also does something to him. His blood purifies us. Leviticus 17.11 For the life of the body is in His blood. I have given you the blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with the Lord. It's the blood, but it's the blood by reason of the life that makes atonement. At one minute. Again, what is God doing? Everything he's done is to make us one with him. And guys, that's going to show up in these days right now. Can you imagine what it, what it looks like for us to know he's so with us, to hear what he wants to do, to connect with him and the plan he has for that day? <laughs> right? When we go into a situation. Remember, we, we talked about what praying in the Spirit does. If you, have, if you don't pray in the Spirit... <clears throat> We'll probably teach more about it on the the second Thursdays, which is what, this week? We're going to do equipping classes. We'll be teaching more things like that that we can actually teach and understand. There's seven awesome reasons why you pray in the Spirit. They're powerful reasons. So when we pray in the Spirit, I wasn't going here, but I guess I better. (laughs) Isaiah 28, verse 11 and 12. This is some Greek, Greek stuff y'all have to go work out. Verse 11 says, this is the rest. This, by stammering lips, I will speak to them. For this is the rest 
R E S T. There's two rests in that in that sen- in that sentence. Two rests. The first rest is a word that means pathway. It's the same word in uh, Psalm 23. He leads me paths. So as we pray in the Spirit, God creates a path for us to step into all he has for us. It prepares us. It creates a path. You see that? I know when I haven't prayed in the Spirit, and like I said, I show up in a situation, I'll go, oh, oh. <laughs> Wish I had a little more. <laughs> so we can, we can pray in the Spirit more. So, I mean, he, I think he's definitely dusting that gift off. Why? We're in the last days. We need that path clear. I just want to tell you, I mean, oh my goodness, I finally turned it on. (laughs) All right, I hope it recorded. I hope it recorded. I I just want to tell you, Acts 19, Paul found some disciples who have been taught under John the Baptist. I won't tell you where I went to church. But you don't find out about speaking in tongues from someone who doesn't speak in tongues. Amen? I didn't know about it. I, the same thing they said. We've never heard about the Holy Spirit. Paul said, well, what, what are you baptizing John the Baptist? Oh, okay, I got it now. Boom. And they began to pray in the Spirit and glorify God and prophesy. So but I, was a, I was a Baptist boy. I had never heard, but thank God for the full gospel businessman. Amen. So it's, I mean, it's, you can't figure this out. We're all smart people. You don't figure out speaking in tongues. There are studies that have shown, I think it was over in England, they put electrodes up, and you spray in the spirit. The brain, the physical brain waves go down almost nothing, even though you're speaking. Because we're speaking mysteries. So I tell you, I mean, we get downloads from God's word as we pray in the spirit, too. Paul did it. Paul said, I prayed in tongues more than anybody. And then six times in Ephesians, he uses that word mystery that comes out of 1 Corinthians 14. Those who pray in tongues pray mysteries. It's always been there, but he is highlighting for us to be able to get insight, intel, as we pray in the Spirit. So we pray in the Spirit, it's a pathway to prepare us, not only for more of God's Word, but prepare us for what He has for us to do in our Metron. We participate with Him. Amen? (laughs) Isn't that crazy? We get to have fun with God doing things with what He does. Jesus said, Jesus prayed in the Spirit. He was a man, but I'm telling you what, boy, I'd love to have been with Him all night. Because He said, I only do what the Father shows me. I only say what the Father tells me. Because He was praying in the Spirit. His path for that day had been Set. That's the first word in rest. Isaiah 28, 11. The second word says, says this is a wet rest. And then it says, so, so, they, they can, so they can have rest. And that second word is the word for anointing. It's the same word that talks about when Eli- Elisha received a double portion from Elijah. God said, I mean, it's just God plants these things in his word. So the two rests are we, we pray in the spirit, we, we have our path carved out, prepared, and then when we get there, the anointing comes for us to be able to do what God's called us to do. But you can't get any better than that. I was not planning on speaking about <laughs> tongues, but when you see what God is doing through praying in the spirit, 
God wants us all to pray more in the Spirit. And then the blood. Oh, my goodness. Acts 13, 38, 39. You talk about people around this and need to be free. Therefore, oh, <laughs> Acts 13. You see it? Acts 13, 38, and 39. Is it there? Okay, guys, I want to hear your word just flipping around. and well, Maybe your, your iPhone... Acts 13, 38. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through him forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. And 39 says, and through him everyone who believes is freed from all things. Freed from all things. That you could not be freed by the law, religion, try and grit your teeth Christianity. And everybody else out there trying to do something to reach God. So through him, everyone who believes is free from all things. That right there, to share that with someone. Guys, that is golden. As we're going about praying in the spirit, seeing God open up conversations, that you can be free from all things. Amen? So we carry that. That's what we carry with God. We can be freed. From all things. Let's look at, he cleanses our conscience. Last time we talked a little bit about the conscience. I'm going to share a little bit more about that. Because it's so powerful. Do you have 1 Timothy 1? Good. Having faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. God wants us to have a good conscience. It is an absolute gift from God to have a good conscience. Paul said, Acts 23, 1. Paul said, Brothers, I have lived my life with a perfectly good conscience before God up to this day. What an amazing statement. The blood cleanses us of evil conscience. Paul knew what the blood did in him. So we can walk with a, a, a clean conscience. Acts 24, 16. In view of this, I also do my best to maintain always a blameless conscience before God and before men. So he maintained a blameless conscience. How? By hearing, listening to the Holy Spirit, responding to him, saying yes when he says do this, and saying no when he says don't do that. <laughs> And again, 1 John 1, 7, when we blow it, a righteous man falls down and gets up seven times. The blood cleanses us of all unrightness. So God's raising up a people that can walk in his righteousness. He is dwelling in us. Ecclesiastes, I mentioned this verse, but I think it's going to be a powerful verse as we realize that the Godhead is weaving himself into us. If one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. But God, God dwells in us. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. And he is weaving all that the Father does in us. In 1 Corinthians 12, this is interesting. You look at the Holy Spirit gifts. In that verse... Let's look at it. 1 Corinthians 12. I don't have that one either. Don't worry about that one, Doug. Because it's interesting. You know, because God is weaving himself in us. It's really cool to see what God does. So is it second? Yeah, second. Wait a minute. Hang on. 1 Corinthians 12. What we see right here, the three triune Godhead God. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And these are the varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And he gives the non-gifts of the Holy Spirit, okay? 
Verse 5, there are varieties of ministry and the same Lord. And then there are varieties of effects, but the same God. Right there is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives gifts. The Lord, verse 5, there are varieties of ministries, the same Lord. Jesus gives the fivefold. We've talked about that. And, of course, he also gives the sonship gifts. Jesus leads us into walking as sons and daughters. That's what Jesus does. He, he teaches us how to walk as a son and daughter, how to hear the Father. And then it says, listen, it says here, this is about your Metron too. But each one is given the manifestation. It says there, uh, verse 6, there are varieties of effects by the same God, by Father God. But that means that God is the one that formed us and shaped us. He's the one who gave you your gifts. And the gifts that send you out into the world where you are rubbing shoulders with people. So don't, don't discount how God has made you and formed you and shaped you. He's the one, the Father has shaped you in the way that Psalm 139, I saw you before I formed you. And I've set your days in my book. That's the Father. He has given you gifts. And I tell you, a Christian, a believer should have started Apple. Amen? <laughs> God has the gifts resident in us. So I just want to tell you this, especially in these days as we continue to move on, to be able to affect this world. You're going to recognize why God has you there. The Father. You're going to recognize the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are going to be at your disposal more and more. And then you're going to have, of course, Jesus brings us the blood and the forgiveness and how to operate as a son and daughter. You know, the Father's house, the Father's business, it's always open. Jesus teaches us how the Father's business is always open. I'm going to, he's going to serve, we're going to serve the Father. So there's a download of the sonship from Jesus. If you put all those together, he is weaving the Godhead in us. Now, I, I gave you enough. You can go and study the different, the three of them. Holy Spirit gives us gifts that will show up when we need the gifts. Of course, when we're awake, <laughs> we're aware God wants to use us, right? Just think about how we all, we put this all together. He's making us aware how he formed and made us and placed us where we are every day. Holy Spirit brings the gifts that are needed. Jan and I love that verse, Psalm 110. We volunteer freely for the day of his power. And then the whole, uh, Jesus teaches us that we are about the Father's business. That's what a true son is. Right. Not about our own business. Right. All that's going away. <laughs> when we're about the Father's business, we're in the best business in town. 24-7. It never closes. <laughs> and and that is, has no barren shells either. Because we have been given all access to heavenly resources. Ephesians 1-3. So we start seeing how God is weaving the Godhead in us. Because God wants, uh, I mean, I, <clears throat> I used to think, I just didn't get a hold of this until I did, and the Lord really showed it to me. The whole thing with seven mountains and, you know, that the church stayed in the one religion mountain. You know, I don't, that, that was the biggest lie of the enemy. And we would just take the salvation bombs and throw it over to the business mountain and over to the political mountain. Hope one hit. When God says, you go in those mountains. Satan, again, Satan tried to fool him and said, hey, look at all these mountains. I can give it to you. It was a counterfeit glory in those mountains. He, I'm sure he showed him all seven mountains. It was a counterfeit glory. Jesus said, I'm not, forget about it. Get out of here. 
I'm going to bring God's true glory through my sons and daughters into these seven mountains. That's why the Father, why, why you are wired for what you do is so important. And then the Holy Spirit's going to be giving us more and more insight in how we, praying in the Spirit, we can be ready and have access to the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how the Son teaches us how to obey. And I don't know where I got all that, but God is good. He's just putting it all together. I know, amen, I know we've, we've taught all around, all three of them, but he's putting it together. It's like Lego sets. Why would I think about Lego sets? Because we have them all over our house. So, I'm going to go through two quick benefits, and I'm going to stay on the third one real quick. First, we're freed from sin. Amen. Romans 6. The power of sin's been broken. Broken. I didn't know that. Because when I went to church, Romans 7 was the excuse to sin. Paul said, I don't know what I don't do. I just can't do what I want to do. I can't do what I'm supposed to do. Sin is always there. If you haven't gotten in week, second Thursday, we we'll talk through this Romans 7, why that has been such a lie of the enemy. Because that was Paul describing how he was when he was trying to fulfill the law. He says in Romans 6 and 8, I am dead to the law. I'm alive to God. Thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ. So we've got to know that sin has been dealt that death blow in Jesus' name. Second thing, we can move and live in His Spirit. There is no condemnation. Romans 8, verse 1. Do you have Romans 8? There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Let's go. Keep going. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Keep going. So that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us to do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. We're dead to sin. We're alive to God. We don't let the enemy fool us and talk to us. Verse, you have verse 9 and 10? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> However, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God, what? Dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, through the body is dead because of sin, yet the Spirit is alive because of righteousness, the force of righteousness. For the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead, what? Dwells in you. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Man, I wish I had heard that message early on. Then I died. My, the old man died. And then I was resurrected with Jesus Christ. You know, as we walk with God, I mean, it gets harder to sin. You know why? Because you have to pull him out of the coffin. Why would you put paint on a dead person? Amen. <laughs> that paint, paint on a pig? That old man's a pig. Guys, we are free. And that's the breed of people. We know this word. We understand. We believe this word. Amen. So, oh my goodness. I'm always like, well, about halfway here, as I always say, we're going to take it up next time. And number three, first I want to say, <laughs> God is the author of all true reality. Period. 
There's a lot of false reality around us right now. So much. 1 Timothy 4 says in the last days there'll be deceiving spirits and doctrine of demons. But we have the reality of God and we, we, we talk back. We say what the reality of God is. I don't know if y'all were there with Eric Metastas the other night, but that was so powerful. I'm looking to see if they recorded it. In, in fact, y'all know people in that organization. Let's find out if they recorded it and tell them we want it. It's powerful. He was talking about how reality has been so distorted, but we have the reality from God. God creates reality. If you, if you want your own reality, create your own universe. <laughs> then you can set the reality that you have. So as we walk with that reality of God, I'm going to tell you how, how we're going to do that. It's because we live from above, okay? That's the third, third powerful point. We live from above. Ephesians 1, 16 to 23. Do you have that? Do I cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. You may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in us, the saints, and the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ, he raised him up from the dead, seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. He put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him his head over all things, who? To the church, <laughs> which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. Woo! And what is Ephesians 2, 6? That's about him. It says, we have been seated in heavenly place. We've been seated at the throne of God, at the right hand of God. Guys, the Lord is talking to me about, I need to keep talking about this because the reality of it, you're going to experience it more and more. And, and seeing God's reality from heaven, You'll be able to see it clearly. You'll be able to speak it clearly. You'll be able to say no to the false reality. You're going to pray different because you're going to see different. I think, you know, Friday night, what, what happened Friday was just, we began to pray from heaven. It's a different place to pray. I've talked a little bit about 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1 and 2. Paul said, I knew a man. He was so like, I can't even touch this. I, I, I knew a man <laughs> who went to third heaven. God allowed him to experience that. And then he says, we have been seated in heavenly realms. So guys, I mean, I'm just going to tell you that in these last days, God's going to teach us how to pray from heaven, how to see from heaven. He's restored the reality of heaven on earth. Let's look at some verses. Let's look at verses about being above, okay? It's the reality of the Spirit of God in our spirit. We are to live from God's reality more and more. We are living from above situations on earth. We see from above the situations on earth. We have authority from the throne room to decree what God is seeing and what God is saying and what God wants to do in situations. I'm going to go through really quick some of these. Psalm 57, 5. You got that, Doug? Think about above. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, that your glory be above all the earth. God is above every situation. When we see from earth, we see the problem. We don't see the solution. We see the conflict. We don't see the answer. 
They don't see the victory. Psalm 97.9, for you, O Lord, most high above all the earth. As I'm doing this, and I know it's a stretch, for us to begin to understand that we're hidden in Christ. The fullness of God is in us. Stretch those wineskins. Because he wants us to be stretched. Because this is the word of God. It's been there. But God is bringing the reality of it in these days. Uh, we know that. And uh, you're going to see some things happen as we step into this. Ephesians 4, 5 and 6. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all. He's over all. I like John 3, 3. You got that one? Truly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. That word born again is Anakin. It means, yeah, born the second time, but it means born from above. We are born from heaven. When we're born again, heaven comes in us. That's why in our spirit, we can see from heaven. We can see what situations are and how God wants to change them. As we, in our spirit, begin to pray and see from heaven. John 3, 31. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly, speaks of the earth. So you see the difference? Yeah. I couldn't share this with everybody. But you guys are like elite. <laughs> you are elite warriors. Because God's looking for a group of people that will see with his eyes and pray from his authority. Yes. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. We're not of the earth, no. are we? <laughs> Whoa! Woo. He who comes from heaven is above all. Where do we come from? Born again from heaven. Whew. I'll do one more verse. This is so powerful. 1 Corinthians 15, 45 and 49. So also it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living soul. But the last Adam became what? A life-given spirit. We're born again. We're not this first Adam. We are the second Adam. We have a life-given spirit carrying around in us. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, then the spiritual. The first man is from the earth, earthly. The second man is from heaven. As, it is, as is the earthly, so also are those who are earthly. And as is the heavenly, so also are those who are heavenly. Just as we are born the image of the earthly, we will now bear also, also, can everybody say also, also bear the image of the heavenly. Thank you, Father. Man. Let's let the Holy Spirit just take this and make it so practical. We're beginning to understand how to pray from above. When you're praying over the situations from above, when you're speaking to the enemy above him, and you realize he is below your feet, you pray different. You also can receive revelation, understanding of, of, of the situation, what God wants to do. Instead of being in the situation and controlled and affected by all the junk that's in it, we go up above it. This is happening. It's happening to us. I know it. And so let's just step into it more and more. Amen? Amen. We are going to always now have a time of just prayer. We'll have prayer folks come. We're going to put on a, a song because I just believe that God wants us. If you need prayer, just please come down. Now you, or you just may want to seek the Lord some and as we 
If you have to go, go, okay? This is going to be that time after, at the end of the service, okay? And you can go. <laughs> but, Doug, do you have the, uh, the song? One thing I want to highlight as we finish up, I felt like the Lord was putting on my heart this week, recovery. Do you have uh, Isaiah 49? And one area is this recovery of our family, recovery of our sons and daughters, recovery of, of things that the enemy is taking from us. So far, you have Isaiah 49, 25. Is that the end, I believe? Yeah, Isaiah 49, 24. Y'all want to turn to it? <laughs> it's, I think it's at the very end. Twenty-four. Can the prey be taken from the mighty man? Can the captives of a tyrant be rescued? This is a question Isaiah is asking. And a lot of times we ask that. We have a son or daughter or a family member or, or, or enemies taking something from us. Can the prey be re taken back? Can the captives of the tyrant be released? Verse 25 says, Surely, says the Lord. This is for someone here. Even the captives of the mighty man will be taken back. And the prey of the tyrant will be rescued. And I will contend with the one who contends with you. And I will save your children. So Father, we thank you for that promise of recovery. And God, we want to pray for each other. We, as we finish up these sessions, God, we want to have a time of prayer opportunity of prayer. And Father, the Jeremiah 30, 17 was the other recovery that you, you spoke. And you said, I will restore you to health. I will heal you of your wounds, declares the Lord. It is Zion who I care for. So Father, I thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, you're you're healing, you're setting free, you're recovering back, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.